This is Pam from Wood Camper Crafts, and today I'm going to teach you how to make these quick and simple baby booties. I love this pattern because it's worked flat. So you have two pieces that you work in rows and then you sew them together. It's really simple to do, so let's get started. So before we get started, you'll need a 5mm crochet hook. And then I'm using the Lions brand Wool Ease yarn, which is a medium weight yarn. I also have scissors, a darning needle, a little leather handmade tag, and some stitch markers. So I've got a ruler here because before we get started, I'm going to measure out some yarn. So I'm just going to measure this to 10 inches. And I'm going to measure 10 inches. 31 times. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring 10 inches for every row that I'm doing and I'm going to be using this yarn to do 31 rows in total. I'm just going to keep measuring this wool out and you can do this on your own and once you're all done I'll meet you back here. And it's always a good idea to measure a little extra just in case. So you can see here I have my ball of yarn that I've just measured out and I'm going to take this yarn and I'm just going to put it off to the side. And then I'm just going to start as I normally would with a slip knot. And I'm going to grab my crochet hook, insert it in the slip knot, and then pull tight. So we're just going to start now by chaining 11. Just make sure the yarn you're using is coming off the ball of yarn and not off the small pile that you just measured. So I'm just making sure I'm grabbing the right yarn here and we're going to start by chaining 11. So yarn over and pull through, that's one. Yarn over and pull through, that's two. Yarn over and pull through, that's three. So I'll let you do this on your own. You need to chain 11 and I will meet you back here when you're all done. So we just finished our chain 11 and we're starting our first row. So there's the first chain and there's the second chain. We're going to insert our hook into the second chain from the hook and we're just doing a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. So we're inserting our hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook to complete your slip stitch. So we're just going to keep doing this all the way along. We are doing 10 slip stitches in total. I will let you work on this on your own and I will meet you at the end of the row. So I finished row one and I have 10 slip stitches in total and you can see my slip stitch here. You can see there's my front loop and my back loop, my front loop and my back loop, my front loop and my back loop. So this is going to be important to identify when we start working on the other side. So I'm going to insert my hook here again. And at the, the end of every row, we just chain one and turn. So now we're going to be doing slip stitches working in our front loop only. So you can see there's my front loop right there. So if you're having trouble identifying your front loop, just turn it over again. So once again, you can see there's our front loop and our back loop. That back loop, when you turn it over, becomes the front loop on the other side. So that is the loop we're working under. We're just doing slip stitches working under that front loop only. So there, just right there, and just right there. So you can see we're just working under the front loop only. If you lose track, you can turn it around again, find that back loop, which becomes the front loop on the other side. So we've already chained one and we're just gonna turn. So we're doing slip stitches under the front loop only. And we're going to do 10 in total. So there's one, and we have two, and three. See, you can just turn it around, and you can see it's the back loop on the other side. So that's three. And I'm just going to let you follow along for this row here so you can just see what I'm doing. So you can see I'm doing just a simple slip stitch and I'm working in that front loop only all the way along and we are doing 10 slip stitches in total. So you can see I'm almost done. I just have three more to do. So that's eight, nine, 
And then our final one is 10. So we're at the end of the row. At the end of every row, we chain one and turn. So we're just going to keep doing this all the way along. We're using the slip stitch and we're working in our front loop only. So I'll show you again. There's our front loop. There's our front loop and our front loop. It's actually, you can see it's that loop that's kind of right on top here. It's the easiest loop to access. So it's actually quite easy to identify. So you can look at it from the side again. You can see that slip stitch. You can see the front loop and the back loop. So we're just going in that back loop, which becomes the front loop on the other side. So now you know the pattern. We are doing slip stitches. We are working in the front loop only. Whoops, I already chained one. I'm just going to turn here. So once again, I am doing 10 slip stitches working in the front loop only. So I'm going to let you work on this on your own. You're doing 10 slip stitches working in the front loop only. At the end of every row, you're chaining one and turning. We're going to do this until we have 26 rows in total. So you can pause this video, you can work on this on your own, and I will meet you back here once you've done 26 rows. So I've completed my 26 rows, and I'm going to chain one, and we're going to start our decrease. So instead of doing a slip stitch in the first stitch, which you can see is right there, we're going to start in the second stitch instead. We're still working under that front loop only, but we're going to start decreasing. So skip that stitch. We're working in the next stitch here, and we are going to be doing nine slip stitches working in the front loop only. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and our last one is nine. So now we only have nine in our row because we skipped that first stitch. So we have nine slip stitches. We are going to chain one and turn. We're doing the same thing. We're going to skip that first stitch. So right there you can see is our first stitch. And we're going to put our needle, our hook in the second stitch. So insert your hook into that second stitch. And we are doing slip stitches working in the front loop only. Now we're going to do eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one here, whoops, going in the last stitch there is eight. So I've got eight slip stitches in my row. We're going to chain one and turn. Once again, skipping that first stitch, which is right there, working in our second stitch. So now we're doing seven. So there's one, two, three, four, whoops, sometimes it's hard to get in there, you have to give yourself a helping hand, five, six, and our last one in this row is seven. So we're going to do two more rows of this, we're going to chain one and turn, Skipping that first stitch, inserting our hook into the next stitch, and we're going to do six this time. That's one, two, three, four, 
five. Whoops, I'm caught there. Sometimes you have to use your nails there to get in there. And then our last one here is six. So we're going to chain one. This is our last row. We're doing five now, skipping that first stitch. Insert your hook into the next stitch. That's one, two, three, four, and the last stitch there is five. And we're all done this part. So I'm just going to grab my scissors now and cut my yarn. And I'm going to take the end and I'm just going to pull it through the loop. And then pull tight to knot. So I've just grabbed my needle here and I'm ready to weave in my ends. So when I weave in my ends, I usually work my needle under four or five stitches, just in one direction. And I'm just going to pull my needle through now. And then what I do is I do the exact same thing, either above or below. So kind of working in a zigzag pattern. And once again, I'm just working in the opposite direction under four or five stitches here. And I'm just going to pull my needle through. And it's just stuck here. I'm going to pull that yarn. And I'm all done. So I'm going to grab my scissors and cut this end. So I'm all finished this end and I'm now ready to start my other end. So here's my original chain and there's that ball of yarn that I measured out in the beginning. So we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. So insert your hook into your original chain, yarn over and pull through. And we're doing 10 slip stitches working in that original chain. So insert your hook yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook, insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over and pull through all the loops. So we're going to keep doing this all the way along and you're going to be doing 10 slip stitches in total working in that original chain. If you want to before you start it might be a good idea to identify all 10 loops so you know exactly where you're working. So we're almost done here. I'm going to just show you the first couple rows and then you can work on this on your own. So we've just got three more to do. So there's eight, nine, and ten. So we've completed ten slip stitches at the end of every row. We're going to chain one and turn. So once again, 10 slip stitches working in that front loop only. So there's our front loop, yarn over and pull through. So we're just going to continue doing this all the way along. So remember, you're doing 10 slip stitches working in the front loops only. You're going to be doing 26 rows in total. I'll let you work on this on your own, and I will meet you back here for the decrease. I've completed my 26 rows and I'm ready to start my decrease. So I'm going to chain one and turn. And remember for the decrease, we skip that first stitch and we're working in the second stitch in the row. So once again, working under that front loop only, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and you can see the way I'm holding this. I'm holding it so I'm looking at it from the top. So sometimes it's easier to identify that front loop when you look at it from the top. So we have three more here. So that's seven, eight, 
And our last one is nine because we skipped that first stitch. So we're going to chain one and turn. Once again, we're going to skip that first stitch, working in the second stitch under the front loop only. We're doing a slip stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and our final one is eight in this row. So we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip that first stitch, working in our second stitch under the front loop only. We're doing our slip stitch. That's one, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, and our final one here is seven. So we have two more rows to go. Let's chain one and turn, skipping that first stitch, starting in our second stitch. Under the front loop only, we're doing our slip stitch. That's one and two, three, four, five, and six. So this is our final row. We're going to chain one and turn. Skip that first stitch, starting in the second stitch, and we're doing slip stitches. That's one, two, three, four, and the final one is five. So we're all done this piece, and I'm just going to cut my end. And we are going to pull it through the loop and pull tight. We're all done our first piece. The last step is just tying off the end, which I'll let you do on your own. We're going to start on our second piece, but before we do that, we need to measure out wool. Once again, we're measuring 10 inches, but this time we're just doing it eight times. So you can do this on your own, and I'll meet you back here when you're done. I'm finished measuring the yarn and I'm just going to do my slip knot again in the middle of the yarn. I'm going to grab my crochet hook, which is still my five millimeter hook, and I'm going to pull tight. So you see I've got the string here that's coming off the ball. Just make sure that is the yarn you are using. So I'm going to start by chaining 13. So that's one. Yarn over and pull through. That's two, three, Four. So I'll let you do this on your own. You're chaining 13 in total and I'll meet you back here when you're all done. I've completed my chain 13. I'm going to be doing slip stitches starting in the second chain from my hook. So there's the first one, there's my second one. I'm inserting my hook and I'm going to be doing 12 slip stitches all the way along. So there's my first one and inserting my hook for my second one. So remember you're doing 12 slip stitches in total and I will meet you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of my row and I've completed my 12 slip stitches. So at the end of every row, just make sure you have the right piece of yarn there, I'm going to chain one and turn. So we're doing the same thing we did in our other piece. We're doing slip stitches all the way along, working in that front loop only. The only difference is that this piece has 12 stitches per row instead of 10. We're also only going to be doing 12 rows instead of 26. You can pause this video and work on this on your own. I will meet you back here at the end of row 12 where we'll start our decrease. I've completed 12 rows and I'm ready to start my decrease. We're using the same technique that we used in the other piece. So chain one and turn and we're going to skip that first stitch right there 
and we're going to start in the second stitch, inserting our hook under the front loop only, and we're just doing a slip stitch. When we get to the end of this row, we will have 11 stitches in total instead of 12 because we skipped that first stitch. At the end of the row, we will chain one and turn, and we will continue this sequence. So you'll skip the first stitch in every row and then do slip stitches all the way along working in that front loop only. So every row will have one less stitch. You'll keep doing this as we did before until you have five stitches in total. I'll let you work on this on your own and I will meet you back here when you're all done. I've completed my decrease and you can see I have five stitches in my last row. So I'm going to just cut the yarn there that's coming off that ball and I'm going to pull it through the loop and pull tight to knot. So you'll have your end here that you can just weave in on your own and we will flip it over here and start the other side. So we're going to be using the same technique we used before. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through. So we're going to be working 12 slip stitches in that original chain. So there's our first one there. We have one. And just find that original chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through all your loops. That's two three, four, and we're just doing this all the way along until you've done 12 slip stitches in total. So this side's a little different. We've done our first row of 12, we're gonna chain one, and we're going to immediately start our decrease. So we're gonna skip that first stitch, and then we're going to insert our hook into the second front loop only and we're doing slip stitches all the way along. So because we skipped that first stitch, we're going to be doing 11 slip stitches in total. So you know how to do the sequence for the decrease. At the end of every row, you chain one and turn and then you skip the first stitch in every row until you have five stitches remaining. So I'll let you work on this on your own and I will meet you back here when you're all done. I've finished the sole and I've weaved in all the ends and this is what it looks like when you're all done. So now it's time to put it all together. I'm taking my longer piece and I'm taking my two ends and I'm crossing them over each other. So they're not lined up, they're actually crossing over on an angle. So that's very important. And now that we've done that, we're ready to line it up with the sole. So that forms the toe. So we're gonna line up all three pieces here and I'm gonna grab my stitch marker and I'm going to just use my stitch marker to hold my work in place while I'm sewing it all together. Once we sew this all together, we're turning it right side out, which means the sides you see right now are the insides. This is important because you want the ends that you weaved in to be on the inside of your baby booty. I'm just going to keep going around, lining up my ends, and putting in stitch markers to hold my work in place. So I have the sole facing me and I'm going to start at the heel and I've got my stitch marker which I'm just going to remove and I already have my needle ready with my yarn on it and I'm just going to insert it from the bottom so through the sole and then up through the top piece and I'm going to leave a tail here so I can weave it in at the end. So just make sure that you keep everything lined up as you're doing this and you're just working all the way along. So I'm going from the bottom through the sole and then up through the top and then back through the sole, up through the top 
and I'm just doing this all the way along just making sure that everything is lined up and going from the bottom through the sole up through the top so I'm just gonna fast forward this part you can do this on your own but I do want to show you how I sew the toe together so I've worked my way around and I'm approaching the toe. So now I'm going to insert my needle through all three pieces. So you don't want to insert it through all three pieces too early. You just want to do it just at the toe. Otherwise, you're only going through the two pieces. So I'm at my toe. You can see my pieces are all lined up and I'm going through all three pieces. So I'm working from the bottom all the way to the top. So I'm working through the three pieces around the toe here and I'm just going to keep doing this all the way along the toe. So I've got my stitch marker here. I'm just going to take that out. It's just a little stuck here. And now I'm just going to make sure those pieces are lined up the way I had them before. And then I'm going to just keep sewing them together. So I'm just going to line them up here again. And I'm just going to keep going, sewing from the bottom, straighten up my yarn there to the top. So you can see I'm on the corner almost. So after this, I just have one more time that I'm going through all three pieces. So you can see I'm right on the corner here. I'm going to go through all three pieces to complete the toe section. But once I complete that toe section, even though I can see that piece in the middle there, I'm only going to go through two pieces. So I'm not going through that middle piece. I'm just going through the two pieces. So for the rest of it, I'm just going through two pieces. It was just right at that toe that I was going through all three pieces. I'm going to keep lining everything up, and I'm just going to keep sewing all the way along until I get back to that heel. So you can do this on your own, and I will meet you back at the heel once you're all done. So I'm all done. All you need to do is weave in your ends. And now that we're all done, we just need to flip it right side out. 